lot of publishing. You know, you when you write a song and your song is, is copywritten, you go through the stages of, of ownership with your work, it's published. You are putting it out in public domain. Now in terms of, it's when you start involving other people into the publishing aspect of your work, that's where it gets tricky in terms of who's gonna pay, what pays, who's gonna keep track of your, um, your songs as far as with play, with radio play, television, and the likes. So when you look at royalties as far as being paid on publishing, you have to look at as far as the songwriter is concerned. You're getting paid on your the ownership of your works as a songwriter in any phase of publishing. The publisher or the songwriter is getting paid from royalties. Hello and welcome back to YourMusicBiz.com. Uh, we're going to go into module number two. And in module one, we had an opportunity to get things in order, how you developed your A-team, your management team, and all that great stuff. But in this module, we're going to get down to business. We're going to study the hardcore subject of publishing. Publishing is a subject that a lot of artists, when they hear publishing, they run in high, okay? When production companies hear publishing, they don't have a clue into how we basically synchronize both things together. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about publishing. I'm going to make it real simple for everyone here to understand the subject of music publishing. Publishing is basically the registration, the exploitation, and the selling of your copyright. That's it in a nutshell. That's what publishing is. Publishing seems bigger than what it is, and so we're going to break publishing down in terms of from start to finish. Okay? First of all, we're going to start with copyrights. Copyrights, when you first record a song or you put a song on paper in any type of tangible form, your song is copyrighted. That is a copyright. You are the owner of that tangible item. You record it, you put it on CD, that's a copyright. Okay? Now, going to the next phase and how publishing comes into play, with your copyright, what you want to do is use the best form of protection for that copyright. So a lot of people say, well, you know, I need to copyright my songs and this and that. Your song is already copywritten. What you're doing is you want to protect that copyright. So how you protect that copyright is you are going to send that copyright to the U.S. Copyright Office. And how you do that is there's two ways to do that. First of all, you're going to, when you have that song, you're going to determine, are you the sole owner of that copyright or is there a, you know, two individuals writing that song? Let's say, for instance, you have an individual that writes the lyrics to the song but they have the melody to that song. That person is the 100% copyright owner of that work. If you have an individual that gives you music before you start writing to that song, the person who did the music is considered the composer and 50% copyright owner of that song. So you will have split ownership of that copyright because what you're gonna do you're going to send a form into the copyright office called an SR form. A SR form stands for sound recording. So if you collaborate with a composer and a lyricist and you come together, that's basically 50% ownership of that song. You send it into the copyright office and we will have information more about sending that in, the proper way to do it. First of all, I want to get with copyrights People have asked me questions, well, you know, can I do a poor man's copyright? Can I mail it back to myself? That sort of thing. You can do that, but guess what? Under the U.S. laws, abiding infringement laws, copyright infringement laws, that is not protecting your song. So you want to go about doing it the proper way and mailing that particular song to the U.S. Copyright Office. That's the first order of business. So as you're filling out your SR form, you're the author of that form, 
you're filling that form out. There's a co-author, you both, your both names will be on that particular form, and one of you will sign off on that form, send the proper payment to the U.S. Copyright Office, and that form will go in, and it takes about six months for that copyright certification that comes back. Once that certification comes back, you have a copyright ownership certificate so then in the court of law you can prove that it's your song as far as the name, the likeness, the sound. Because a lot of times when people sue individuals for that particular song, they're suing because it sounds like my song. So it's a copyright infringement upon that. And we're going to get a little bit more into that. So that's the first step as far as within publishing. The next step would be how do we determine royalties for our copyright. Remember, your copyright is your ownership. So what we're going to do, we're going to kind of draw a little pie here. We have 100% of that song, okay? So within publishing, if you are the writer, you have 100% of that song. If you are a co-writer, you're going to have 50 this share here is what we call the publisher share. So the publisher is going to have a share of that copyright ownership. Now with the publisher, he's going to determine what, how much of percentage of that song the publisher is going to receive. Because the writer will have 100%, but he's going to have to split that with the publisher. So the publisher is going to take between 25 and 50% of that particular song. So that's determined basically contractually. If you have a contract with the publisher or a publishing company, they're going to want to get a piece of that 100% of the pie here. So what you're going to do, you're going to take that, that 75%, and you're either going to give that publisher 50% or 25% of that total song because you have ownership. Now, another thing you're going to determine as far as your royalties are concerned, if you are a songwriter, you cannot receive a share of royalties unless you're part of a performing rights royalty. Now, with the performing rights royalty is where you're performing your song, you're putting your song in tangible form to get out to the public. A, a performing rights organization, we know them as BMI, ASCAP, and CSAC. Those are the three major performing rights organizations. So with that, what you're going to do is the same thing. They are going to determine your royalty rate as far as your performing rights is concerned. So if you write a song, remember, you have a song that's in tangible form, you're registered with BMR ASCAP, they're going to determine your royalties based on your radio play. Your song is played on radio, BMI is going to track that radio play and determine how much royalties and determine that performing rights royalties. That will determine what share of royalties you may get. As far as the publishing company is concerned, the writers, BMI will send a check directly to the writer and BMI is going to send a check to the publisher. So it's determined through a letter of direction and I want to be very clear. The performing rights organization will need a letter of direction determining the split in percentages. They can't guess what your percentage is going to be because a lot of it is determined, and we're going to go into it a little bit later. As far as, let's say, for instance, your record is played on radio. It's played in Miami, New York, uh, Detroit, Atlanta, whatever in the urban market. If your song is played, let's say, drive time, your royalty rate will be higher than if your song is played, let's say, on the weekends or anything like that because the performing rights organization is going to determine the royalty rate that they're going to pay you as far as the percentages are concerned. So you have BMI, ASCAP, and CSAC. Those are the performing rights organizations. They're going to determine your royalty rate on performing rights. Now with mechanical royalties, mechanical royalties are royalties that the record label is going to pay out to you as a songwriter. So the songwriter, the publishing company is, de is basically uh, determining whether you're going to receive mechanical royalties. They're going to uh, determine your percentage on performing rights royalties. 
So performing rights royalties is radio and television. So basically that's called a blanket license. So with a blanket license, when a radio station plays your song, BMI is going to determine every quarter, three times a year, how much money you will receive. So that's why publishing is so vital to the industry and vital to your career as a songwriter. Now, as far as mechanical royalties, the record label is going to pay the songwriter a percentage based on how many sales. So once that song is selling, you're going to receive a statutory rate. So everyone in the United States and in foreign markets receive the same statutory rates, but the record label will determine how much of that statutory rate they're going to pay you as a songwriter. Okay, uh, I think as of this year, the rates was beyond 8.5 cent. So everything is calculated to a dollar as far as your mechanical royalties are concerned. So you know how when they swipe your CDs and the mechanical royalties build up from there and that determines how much the record label is going to pay that songwriter. The publishing is just determining how much the writer gets. It has nothing to do with the singer. That's just for publishing. Uh, another aspect of uh, royalties besides mechanical and performing rights royalties is what we call sheet music. There's a percentage on sheet music that you will receive from the performing rights organization as well. And sheet music is determined by as far as, you know, uh, how many lyrics were sold as far as that sheet music is concerned. Another aspect of royalty is what we call special use. Special use is when you have ringtones, when you have video games, and these again are blanket licenses. So if there's a video game that your music is played on, that can be tracked and that royalty is paid out. If there's ringtone, ringtones are paid as well. So the record label determines the percentage that they're gonna take out on the publishing of that ringtone. That's kind of a general term in terms of uh, what aspect of licensing that we're moving towards. There's a, a such thing as a mechanical license where you're receiving permission to um, re-record uh, an individual original composition. Uh, there's licensing agreements that you may have an agreement with producers for composition or tracks, uh, as we may call it. So there's various licensing agreements. There's sync license agreements for movies. Uh, so there's a lot of general terms when it comes to licensing, uh, but you want to make sure that whatever license that you receive or that you're going after, that you have a clear understanding of what that license means, from uh, sync license to mechanical license. So you have special use, you have mechanical, you have performing rights. Those are the methods of royalties that pay out. As far as your performing rights organizations, you have BMI, you have ASCAP, and you have CSAC. Okay? Now, we're going to go into as far as how we determine as far as with publishing. There's different type of publishing agreements. You can have a co-publishing deal where the writer and publisher will determine, you know, with the contract, how much publishing will go out to that publishing company because the publishing company is going to pay that writer a percentage or upfront advance to write songs. So a lot of times people may get confused as far as the role of a publisher. A publisher is an administrator. A publisher is going to take your song and administer that song. They're going to exploit your song. They're going to put it out there. Just say for instance you have a song and you want to get it to a famous artist, someone who's in the business. It's that publisher's job to get that song to the right individual. They will uh, charge you an administrative fee. They will give you an advance, and that advance will come out once they make their money back off that particular song. So there's various deals with as far as publishing deals, but the thing that you want to keep in mind as an artist, as a producer, and as a songwriter, your understanding of publishing is vital. Because if you don't understand publishing, first of all, you're not going to make any money not understanding the role of publishing, but second of all, you're not going to understand as far as the concepts and how it works because most individuals' careers are based on how am I an effective songwriter in my understanding of publishing in the music business. So again, we have our copyrights, which is ownership of that song. Your song is copywritten the moment you put it in tangible form, but you're protecting that copyright. 
Um, next, as far as your uh, organizations, as far as, you know, BMI, ASCAP, CSAC, those are your performing rights organizations. And another step I want to mention as far as uh, with publishing is sampling. Now, with sampling, sampling is a direct, and let me uh, emphasize that, sampling is a direct copyright infringement on your original work if you don't have permission to sample that particular song. As a matter of fact, sampling is a federal offense in the United States. So before you sample a song, make sure you have permission from the original copyright owner, the person who originally owns that song, or the publishing company, or the record label. So if you um, commit that crime of sampling, and you brought about as far as in copyright infringement, first of all, you have to pay the original copyright owner of that song. You have to pay the record label as well and the publishing company. Because if that song is out there and is selling, you owe money. Okay, and you can't get beyond that. So sampling is very serious. So before you do that, make sure you have permission. So it's not an infringement on someone's original form, original work. So um, that will take us there. So as far as our licensing, our royalties, our publishing, and publishing is simply the registration, exploitation, and selling of your original work. And so that's what publishing is. So that will conclude um, our module number two on publishing. Uh, do I have any questions uh, from the audience? Okay, that's a great question. Great question. Uh, an example of a poor man's copyright is where you take your work in tangible form, uh, let's say a CD, and you mail it back to yourself. You address it to yourself and you don't open the envelope. That's considered a poor man's copyright because what you're determining is the time frame in which that song was recorded, you know, which was depicted. So that's a poor man's copyright, but I would advise tremendously against that. One reason is that you can't determine copyright infringement with a poor man's copyright. The only thing that you can determine is maybe a slight time frame, but that may not be accurate as far as the actual recording of that particular song. Because if you record a song and you put an envelope and mail it back to yourself, that time frame can be from one day to one year. You know, but in determining copyright infringement, whether someone may steal your song, you want to go through the proper channels, filing that proper paperwork with the U.S. Copyright Office. So that, that's, that's a great, great question. I was wondering at what point do you think it's a smart idea to approach a, a publishing rights company? Like, I'm being played on the radio in a few cities and stuff like that, but I'm not signed or anything. So at what point is it? a good idea to approach like ASCAP or BMI and register it? Um, great, great question. Uh, you need to register with a performing rights organization the minute that you decide that you want to become an artist or a songwriter. Because once your song is played on the radio or is played on television, royalties start to calculate. If you're not registered, it's almost like going to a job and working and they don't know where to mail the check to, okay? So you got all this money being piled up. So it's vital that you join a performing rights organization as soon as possible. So then that way, you have a tracking method, you have protection for your songs, and you have a way in which you receive your royalties as a writer. So I would say you do, do that right away. Okay, and um, one thing I do want to mention is that as of the past uh, five years, there's a performing rights organization called Sound Exchange. Now, Sound Exchange collect royalties from internet radio play, which is, is new uh, to the system, and a lot of individuals aren't aware of Sound Exchange, but that's another uh, performing rights royalty that will collect your royalties upon your radio play being played on internet radio play as well as satellite radio. 
So keep that in mind. You want to also register with Sound Exchange. And the good thing about Sound Exchange is that they're also collecting royalties from uh, work for hire, uh, for producers as well. So individuals are receiving royalties from Sound Exchange based on not just your writing royalties, but also your performance royalties on those particular songs. So if you have songs that are being played on the internet, satellite radio or in the future being played on the internet, it's vital that you go to Sound Exchange and register uh, as a songwriter on Sound Exchange as well. Thank you.